you're using Roll20 for your online D&D games, you've probably realized how much of the process it can really streamline. Complicated dice pulls can now be reduced down to a single click, but certain characters might still find themselves having to manually type in some of their extra damage. Great examples of this is a rogue with sneak attack, a warlock with hex, or a ranger with their hunter's mark. So let's cover two quick ways that you can save your players from always having to type in slash R 2d6. Now for this first route, we're going to need to be the game master because we'll be editing the game settings itself. So let's look at where that is in roll 20. When we're on the splash page for the campaign, the far right button is settings, and then the top option is game settings. Once that loads, we scroll down to the area where we see all the global modifier fields and the bottom one is show global damage modifier field. We check the box and then scroll down and save settings. Once that is loaded, we can jump into the game itself and then any of the players can go to their character sheet and the far right button is the gear that takes them to their page settings. And in the far right hand column, they can see the field that says show global damage modifier field. If they check that box and go back to their core page, in the center on attacks and spellcasting, they now have this new area where they can type in sneak attack, how much damage it does, and then the type. And we'll just call that sneak attack. Click the gear, and then you now have a toggle that lets you turn it on and off. So if sneak attack applied, you would check the box, and then when you click on your weapon, now when you roll, you will have the weapon damage and you will have this new damage type. This second route can be done by anyone, whether you're a game master or player, and some folks enjoy it a little better because what it does is it opens a prompt that asks you yes or no if the damage applies. So you can hard code it into a specific weapon, and then no matter where you use that weapon from, your macro bar, your token actions, or your character sheet itself, you get the prompt asking you, hey, does the extra damage apply? This means you won't have to remember to keep going into your sheet and turning the global modifier field on and off. It has the added benefit though of not being global. If the damage bonus that you're applying only works on one weapon, then it might be better not to have that global field that affects everything you do. If you have a longsword that does an extra d8 damage against giants, you can put this method of damage onto that longsword, and every time you swing it, simply get a prompt that says, hey, are you attacking a giant? And then if you hit no, the damage doesn't apply. So what we're going to do is we go to our weapon, click on the gear that opens the weapon stats, and we see our attack, our damage, and then damage two. We turn on damage two, and in that text field, we're going to insert a macro. The macro I'm using is the macro for the first level rogue sneak attack. It's in my chat box and I'll list it right here. And in a minute we'll go over changing that macro to suit your needs. Once we've inserted the macro down in damage type, we can add sneak so that we know what it is and then close the weapon. Now when you click on that weapon, you'll be provided with the prompt box. And from there you can select from your choices. Yes, sneak attack applies and hit submit. And now when it rolls damage, we have our weapon damage. Hey, max damage. And then we have our sneak attack. Hey, max sneak attack damage. So let's deconstruct our macro. The way that roll 20 knows how much damage to do is the first bit of that where it says sneak attack is what text shows up on that prompt box. The next bit between two pipe characters is no comma zero. That's our first choice. If you select no, roll 20 knows to do zero damage. And then if you select yes, it does 1d6 damage. So let's change our macro for something that's not a binary set of choices, like a paladin smite. We can't solve smite with just a yes or no choice because how much damage smite does is dependent on what level spell you cast smite at. So we're going to take our macro and change sneak attack to what level, because that's going to be the prompt that it asks the player. Now, Instead of no, we're going to change it to first level, and at first level, smite does 2d8 damage. We'll change our yes to second level, and at second level, it should do 3d8 damage. Now, as we discussed, we are doing more than binary options, so we're going to add another pipe character, and we're going to 
add a choice for third level, which will be 4d8 damage. If we take this macro now and add it back to our weapon, and we will call it Smite, we should now be able to click on our rapier. What level? Third level. Bam. Smite. Rolling 4d8. Ta-da! And that's all I got for you for this video. Just two quick ways you can kind of help automate that extra damage a character might be doing. The first one was that global modifier field that affects everything that comes out of the attack and spell casting field. And the second one was the damage macro that we can put on a specific spell or an attack. And that allows us to modify the macro that will modify the damage output that we get. It's really versatile, but it only works on one thing at a time. If you have any questions about the stuff I covered today, or if you have ideas for future Roll20 tutorials, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below or reach out to me via my contact information. I hope you found this useful, and I hope you have a great day.